Hello again everybody, this is Mr. Everything. We're coming at you with another Wargaming Miniatures video. In this video we're going to continue our bolt action boot camp with Conventions of War. In this video we're going to be measuring distances and talking about units and uh, measurements. In these videos you're going to be able to learn uh, how to play bolt action and also if you're a veteran bolt action player if you watch these videos you might get some insight in some other aspects of bolt action that maybe you haven't considered. All right, now in bolt action, bolt action is uh, officially played in 28 millimeter. So there are uh, tw uh, a large line, a huge line of 28 millimeter bolt action Warlord miniatures uh, that are great for this. Uh, you can find Old Glory miniatures. You can find all different kinds of miniatures to play bolt action. But what I have done is I have decided to play it in 20 millimeter because of the selection of models, also because of the scale. And, uh, but I have not changed any of the rules, so I have not changed any of the measurements in the game. So, um, it still plays just like traditional bolt action, just with 20 millimeters. So, the rules that I'm about to quote to you are still the official rules, and not they have not been changed or descaled or anything like that to 20 millimeter. Okay, so when you're measuring distances from a model to another model, you're always measuring from the base itself. Not the figure, not the man, not the rifle tip. You're measuring from the closest point of the model to the closest point of the model uh, based on the base, okay? So when you're measuring distances, you go from the base all the way to see how far it is to the next guy. All right, now if a model does not have a base, what you're doing is you measure from the, the hull. If it has a gun carriage, you measure from the gun carriage. Uh, you don't measure from the barrel, okay, or a rifle barrel. You measure from a torso, if it doesn't have a base, a hull, a gun carriage. Hypothetically, like this tank would be eight and a half inches away from that infantry model. When you're talking about a gun carriage, you're measuring it from where the barrel from the wheels, the little, that's the carriage. The, what's holding the gun is the gun carriage. So it's like nine inches. If you've got a unit that you've mounted a number of figures on a single base, you have to imagine that each of these figures has a base under them. Like uh, each one of these men have a round base, which is uh, one inch around each of the figures. So when you measure, you're not measuring from this giant base. Because what if what if I want? Because there's no large basing uh, conventions in bolt action. So if I wanted to, I could put like this six inch base around my machine gun, and then my machine gun's measuring from the end of my six inch base. No, it measures from the 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 one inch circle that's around my figure. So you have to measure. Now, in my case, you know what I would do? I would measure to the tripod or something like that. I would have a, I would have a designated, let my opponent know that I, that's the point I'm going to be measuring to. So a little over nine and a half inches. Now, if a model is prone, okay, you, you might have a few of these. You might have some prone models. Uh, you have to imagine that there are two one-inch bases connecting. So you're looking at a one-inch wide by two-inch long base, and you just measure to that base just like you measure any other base. That applies not only for prone, but also cavalry and motorbikes, things like that. All right, now most units have more than one model in them, like these models here, these models here. Uh, it's usually between five to 10 to 12, five to 12 models consist of a unit. I mean, there are some units out there with two or three, uh, but generally you're gonna see five or more models in a squad. So when you measure from a squad to another squad or another object, you always measure from the closest model to the closest model. So like I would measure from this closest model to their closest model, he's just over 12 inches. And remember, there's no measuring before deciding. So if you decide to shoot or if you decide to move or something like that, you can't go, well, that thing's more than six inches away, so I, I'm not going to move. I'm just going to shoot. Can't do that. You've got to decide. Okay, am I going to move? Am I going to shoot? And if you decide to move, then, of course, measure your guy to move. And if it's too far, then that's too bad. Same thing with shooting. 
All right, now for seeing someone, uh, to determine if someone can see someone else, lean down, get behind the model, look through the model, and see if that model that you have on the table could see that opponent. If there's something in the way, and this, it, you will actually be able to tell by getting down behind. I know there are people that like to use laser sights and things like that, but uh, there's nothing more gratifying or, or, or the reason why you play the game is to kind of immerse yourself into the battle. So you might, you will want to lean down and actually pretend like you're actually that soldier and say, can I see this guy? Um, that's where I get some enjoyment out of it. And that's why I love beautifully painted models on the table. Now, if you're just checking for sight, uh, you don't need to worry about vehicles or other infantry in the way uh, blocking, because uh, in, in fact, you'd be able to see around other infantry and vehicles, things like that. The only thing you would need to worry about those for would be shooting. Now, if a vehicle literally blocks your line of sight, like you got a tank that's like that, when you get down there, if it's like 100% blockage and these two guys cannot definitely not see any of those guys, then yes, it would be blocked line of sight. But if it was like that, yeah, they could see. I mean, you, you take a look behind the model. If he can see over the top of this, he could see that. Table boundaries. You're always played on a table. Some people play on a 2x2 two two for those really small games, or a 3x3, three three, or a 4x4. Four four. Uh, four by six or four by eight are the most popular scales. Four by six is what all the scenarios are written for. Um, and I have a five by nine. Uh, do I play on a five by nine? No, I play on a four by six just because that's way the way all the scenarios are written. But if you have a scenario that's written for a 12 foot table, play on it. You know, vehicles can, you know, you, you have a good, play whatever table you want. But the scenarios, most of the scenarios are written on a four by six. All right, now we're going to talk about the units. Uh, this is actually the next chapter, but I said we're going to put three chapters into one on this video. There's different types of units. There's infantry, which these are infantry. There is artillery, which anti-tank guns would be considered artillery because they're on a carriage. There's vehicles, and those could be soft vehicles or armored vehicles. And that's it. Those are the only types of, you have infantry, which is, these guys would be infantry. And then you've got Artillery, which is like a gun carriage, towed weapon usually. And then vehicles, which could be soft trucks or, or it could be tanks. And that's it. That's the only types of uh, troops. Okay, the rules are written for infantry battle. So the, the game Bolt Action, hence the name Bolt Action Rifle, right? Bolt Action is specifically designed for infantry-based games. When you design your army... Uh, we'll get into this later, but when you design your army, you have to have infantry units in it. Uh, vehicles, artillery, all that stuff is support. They support the infantry. And in this game, if you're mounted on a bicycle, a motorbike, even a horse, you're still considered an infantry unit. Now a vehicle, we're going to talk about a vehicle that normally comes with a driver. Okay, so if you've got a Jeep or a truck or something like that, it's going to have a driver in it so it can move around the table. If it's, if it's a fighting vehicle, like a tank, or uh, like a Jeep with a machine gun that's not a transport vehicle, it will have a gunner as well. Or it'll have a fighting crew, actually, is what it says. Okay, so now your models are based on bases. We mentioned that earlier. And then they have to stay within one inch of each other. So um, uh, a unit cannot have guys spread out like that, okay? You can't do that. You have to stay within one inch of each other to maintain, as Warhammer used to call it, cohesion. Right? In this game, they call that formation. So if for some reason, one of your models gets killed, and that leaves a gap, or, or this, this model here now is out of cohesion, temporarily, that's okay. But when that unit is issued a movement order, the next time it's issued a movement order, this guy must resume cohesion. He has to do it. So like if, they're, if, if he's out here and these guys decide they want to move this way, they're going to have to slow down a little bit to allow this guy to catch up. He has to be able to resume cohesion. If you have two units on the table and you're, and you're uh, moving, you, have, you, can move, you can intermingle. You can move through your own guys, but that's going to come up in movement. We're talking about conventions. These two units have to stay at least one inch apart. I could not have these guys, because, you know, 
a unit could, if I wanted to, they could all be touching. If I wanted to do that. And this unit could all be touching. That'd be fine. But this guy cannot be within an inch of this unit. They have to be separate entities. Uh, if I get too close, my opponent might think that they're all the same unit. And it helps prevent getting guys intermingled, you know, with like guys in the middle like this. Even though they're all an inch apart, you know, you can't do that. So just remember, units have to stay at least an inch apart. It'll also help you with the order dice and moving units and things like that. All right, thanks for coming out and watching this video and learning a little bit about bolt action. And come back for the next video. It's going to be the turn and the order dice. I'll see you on the battlefield.